folder or just the video? The whole folder. Okay, so um, there's this uh, folder that I gave you video examples. I, I don't know why I call it plural. There's only one video in there. But okay, there's a video in there. I'm going to play it briefly. This is the idea that, okay, um, again, later we'll talk about what, how do I develop an idea or a concept for YouTube. Right now we have a video. Let's say I am going to do, um, for my web design business, I'm going to make videos on a regular basis about web design. Okay, so that was my idea. So then it's about execution, about recording it and all. And here I just did a very quick recording. We'll talk later about doing it more professional and all of that. So I recorded something last night to use in the class. I'm just going to play this briefly. Hello and welcome to the weekly Web Design Minute. I'm Victor Campos. This is the series where I give you a great web design tip in about a minute. Okay, so at the very beginning you saw I was collecting my thoughts and I don't say anything for a moment. I probably want to remove that <laughs> as part of my video, so I need to Hello and welcome to the week. edit out the first four seconds or so. So okay, we'll learn how to do that, how to edit out, you know, parts where nothing's happening. There's also a couple of mistakes I make in here that I want to edit out. I maybe I want to add some text. I, maybe I want to add my name right at the bottom here. As I say my name, I want to show my name on screen. This is Windows, correct? This is the one Windows program or the video program. This is simply the video that I'm playing, so it's just the video. I'm, we're not in the editor yet. Oh, but wait, you just so you recorded on your phone or? Oh, I recorded this off my laptop. Okay. Yeah, my laptop has a little web camera. I recorded it off of that. Okay, so right here also I'm. Preparing myself for the next thing I'm going to say, I want to remove this that. week. We're talking about Twitter and the importance of social media. Remember, you want to claim your name on various social media platforms as soon as you can so that no one else takes that name. And Twitter with 330 million people is the perfect website. And Twitter with over 330 million people is the perfect so I'm trying to figure out how to say it. And Twitter is the perfect social network with over 330 million people. So make sure you get your name on twitter.com as soon as you can. This has been Victor for the Social Media Minute. What did I call this thing? So obviously things that I want to fix. Um, cutting out the part because this is again about the idea this is the idea of uh, having a plan I just sat down and recorded this I have a general idea I, if I've got a script and all that other great stuff then uh, I have a better plan to make a better video the recording aspect of it we'll talk about that later and what kind of cameras and all that great stuff but for the moment I've got a video it's uh, it's uh, 1 minute 24 seconds I need to go in and remove the mistakes and add text and music and all of that so that's what we'll cover first so you should have a copy of the uh, of the folder uh, go over to your start menu down there Windows start menu and then start searching for <coughs> movie maker when you search for the app Movie Maker, it should appear as the first result program. Then click up there, Movie Maker. So we're going to be using the Windows Movie Maker, which is the Microsoft version. There's obviously also iMovie on the Mac. The interface is going to be different, but the concept is going to be the same. You add clips. You add pieces of video or pieces of audio. You put them in different order, the correct order. You edit out a mistake. You add text. You add music. So from here, I get this interface. And I won't, I won't really need to explain what every button does. Because again, if you're using iMovie, it doesn't matter that you know them all. And then even if you're using the Windows Movie Maker, you don't need to know what all of them do. At the very least, though, I need to add my video to my project. I need to add my video into Movie Maker. So once I start Movie Maker, go ahead and click here. Click here to browse for videos or photos. So click on that icon. 
that's then going to ask you to, f to locate that video file. So you're going to go to your desktop where you've got the video file right there. And then click on the video and then click open and wait for it to open it up. Project file, not a video file. Yeah, I didn't see where you clicked. <laughs> All right, so let's let me wait on mine. So what's going to happen is it's going to open it up. It's going to read the file. It, it'll show you yours probably looks something like mine. It'll show a bunch of little still shots of my video. Once this opens up here, then we'll proceed. Um, technically, this is known as ingesting a video. You never need to know that, but now you do ingesting a video. All right, so once that comes in, the first thing we want to do here is this project file is not uh, ready for us to um, work very much with. We need to save this. Uh, so up on the top left corner, you have the button Save Project. Uh, all of these changes that we're going to make, they're known as non-destructive edits. Uh, old versions of the software, like 10, 15 years ago, video software what they would do is if you edited your video it would change your original video if I cut out a part it would change it from the original you don't have to worry about that basically nowadays nowadays it's non-destructive so all of the changes that we make changing the color changing the speed changing all of that does not affect your original video but all of those edits are being saved in a project file so let's click here save project it's going to ask you where to save it. Save it in the same folder as video example. And here it's saying, what would you like to call your project? It's saying mymovie.wlmp, Windows Live Movie Project. Uh, you can name this whatever you want. I'm going to call this um, Social Media Tip. That's going to be the name of my project. Uh, that's what this video is. It's a social media tip. Uh, you can be as detailed as you want. Social media, I think I talk about Twitter. Social media tip, Twitter. So maybe my idea, and again we'll talk about ideas later, but maybe my idea is that every week I'm going to create a video, a short video, where I give a social media tip. Well, obviously, depending on my business, maybe I'm Victor's Bakery. So how can I create videos on a regular basis about my business to get me traffic? We'll talk about the ideas later. Again, today is about the, the grunt work of editing the video. 
So make sure you're saving this WLMP file in the same folder as where your video project is at. I think it's a Windows Live Media Project. <laughs> Once you save that, on the top left now it says, okay, this is your project. Social media tip, Twitter, in your movie maker. You get all of these still shots on the right side, and then on the left side you get a preview of the video. Now you don't have headphones, and that's okay, but if you had headphones you can plug them in to hear what you're doing, but it doesn't quite matter. I've got volume here. But on the left side, this is a preview of the video. This is the length of the video here. This playhead plays from here to here. That's the whole video. This video currently is 1 minute 24 seconds and 0.27 uh, milliseconds. You can play it, fast forward, rewind, pause it. If you click play right there, it starts to play. Hello and welcome to the weekly web design. And meet. as you I'm see, as I click play this is here, the series the where I give you a forward, great web design tip in about a minute. This playhead is moving here as well. It's okay that it's the same photo throughout. That's normal. It doesn't show you. This week frame. we're talking about Twitter but and the importance of moving, social that's media. Moving, that's moving. Remember, you want and to claim uh, you your name you on various social media platforms as soon as you can so that no one else voice. takes that name. And Twitter, with 330 million people, is the perfect website. So if I pause that, if I bring this back to the beginning, you see at the beginning of my video, the first few seconds, I don't speak. Then I start to speak at that point. If I need to know exactly when that is, I can either drag this playhead over, and you see it moves over on the right side as well, or I can grab that playhead, that black line, I can grab that line and also move it over. This one's actually a little bit more accurate. When I move this one, it moves in smaller increments. When I move this one on the left, it moves in larger increments. The point of this is there's a bunch of uh, emptiness that I want to remove at the beginning before I actually start talking. I don't need all of that where I'm gathering my thoughts. So the idea is I need to get to the part of the video where I need to cut out what I don't need before we do that. Um, on the bottom right corner there's a zoom. You see if you drag this zoom, it zooms you in and out. If I drag it all the way to the left, the whole one and a half minutes video is that one little strip, one little preview. If I drag it all the way to the right, all of these sort of like little um, preview thumbnails is one second or so. You see if I click here, I jumped in one second into the video. If I click here, I'm two seconds in here. So now all of these represent one second increments. This zoom is about that. Seeing the video, if I see it like that, all one and a half minutes is represented in one view. And now each one of these sort of like little divisions here, it's, it's several seconds at a time. It's about four or five seconds at a time. The point of that is that uh, sometimes you have to zoom out to see the whole project. Sometimes you zoom in. Usually myself, I have it zoomed in all the way to the right so that I can actually deal with it in small increments of time to pick the right spot. Because I've got to find the spot where I, I'm no longer you know, thinking and then, okay, I'm about to start talking. If I go to this point here, if I, if I cut, if I remove the dead air up to that point, my, I'm going to start awkwardly the video. My mouth's already open, perhaps. Um, maybe I want to start the video where you know my mouth is closed down here. My expression is still weird, but I uh, maybe start right here. That's when I start the video, and then one second later I start to talk. So this is this is editing the art and the science and the magic of, of editing, removing the mistakes, but also deciding where to make a cut, where to flow this into this, 
fade this into that. And in the time that we have here, we're not going to become an expert at all. This is something that takes weeks, months, years to be good at if you're really interesting in video editing. I've dabbled in it for probably like 15 years. There's always something new to learn. I like it. I'll show examples of my videos later. But at the very least, we're going to use this video editor to just touch the tip of the iceberg of editing. Yes? So to hack off that first section that you got to the left, how do you do that? That's what I'm getting to. So we're going to pick the right position of where we're going to do the cut. So whatever, wherever you feel is the good part to do the cut, maybe in my case, 4 seconds, 37 milliseconds. Wherever you want to do the cut, you do the right click, and then you have uh, split. It's like we're getting scissors, and we're splitting. This is like the classic film you know, classic uh, movie film where you have the actual roll of film and the editors in the past, they would have a knife or a scissors that they would cut right here and the actual film would be cut. So we're splitting the clip. Go ahead and right click, split. And what happens is now you've got this chunk at the beginning and a new chunk that starts and the thumbnail changes. Well, I've got now a piece of film here and a piece of film here. I don't need this piece anymore. You can remove it. You can also right click and there's remove in there. But wherever you want to split the clips, you can do right click, split. And then I've got a piece I no longer need, so I can right click, remove. Yes? So you go to the left of where you split and then right click? Just to be sure here. Notice how when you click on the left part, it highlights blue. And when you click on the right, that highlights blue. So make sure you've clicked on the piece you don't want first. It highlighted it. Then you right click and remove it. Yes? Split is cut. So what is cut when you left and right click? What is cut to? These cut up here are very much like cut and paste, copy and paste. So if I would do the cut up here, what that would be is like it cut it into the memory so that then I can paste it later. Okay. So I can rearrange my words. So for this editing purposes, split is cut. Most of the time you're going to be doing splitting. Uh, you don't do cut very often unless you actually have to rearrange what you've said. So usually you're going to split to say, here's where I'm going to cut the film, and then you do remove, where here's where I'm going to remove the part I don't want. Is there an undo? So if you were on the wrong spot, Yes. At the very top left corner, there's, a, there's the undo button, which is also control Z, like it usually is in most software. And if you then need to redo it, there's that one right there, redo or control Y. So this left piece, I'm going to right click it and remove it. Now when I, uh, when I back up my, my playhead to the very beginning, and now when I press play, hello and welcome to the weekly, I removed all of that at the beginning that was superfluous. It starts off, hello and welcome to the, right there, directly in what I'm starting to say. Hello and welcome to the weekly Web Design Minute. I'm Victor Campos. This is the series where I give you a great web design tip in about a minute. Then there's a part that I can see here via my audio. I start, I stop speaking here, I blow my nose here, then I start talking here. So there's all of this part in between here. I need to split it here, and I need to split it here and remove the part in the middle. Well, once again, simply by looking at my voice, and I say, okay, I'm going to move it here, and I'm going to split it here. Right click split, then move it down here. Right click here, split. Simply by going by my voice, that may or may not work. I'll show you why. See, I'm going to remove the part in the middle now, and now let me play it again. In about a minute. Well, let me back up here. Give you a great web design tip in about a minute. This week, it was too abrupt. I was saying something, and suddenly I'm saying something else. What I'm trying to get at is, just because you see 
that I stop talking there doesn't mean that's the right split point. That's the right point to split. I have to play and replay and get sick of my own voice over and over to see how does it flow? What makes sense? Where should I cut it? So if I play it again, if I back up here, now I'm using the shortcut of the space bar to quickly pause and play. Right. Give you so a great what space bar is very useful to design. stop and play it instead of having to go back all the time. Play in about a minute. Pause. Keyboard shortcut of the space bar. What I mean is I'm going to back up over here and then play it for a moment. Great web design tip in about a minute. I want to stop there. I've finished speaking. I've closed my mouth. It's over here. It's approximately a second after I stop talking. So not at the moment I stop talking. Approximately a second later, I will split. Then I need to figure out, and it might be also approximately a second before I start talking, or half a second, somewhere. Uh, I'm going to choose a point that matches as best as possible when I stop talking, when I can start talking, to remove all the part in the middle. Yeah. So how do you get rid of the split? Let's say you've got two splits that you put up, and then, whoops, you know, you want to go back. If you click remove, that's going to delete it, right? Yeah, if you made a mistake, you want to undo. You want to hit the button on the top left corner here to take you back to take back the mistake. Is that what you mean? You accidentally split it the wrong way, or you're trying to split in between? Well, I put in two splits, but I want to have one of the splits and remove it. But what you're saying is I have to go back two steps. I can't just go and remove one split. I think you can. Let me show you what I mean. So uh, at, at this point, uh, that's where I'm going to split it. So I'm going to right click, uh, split right there. And then I'm going to find a part over here. Uh, looks like it's good right here. So I've got another split. So I, I have two splits. I have this first clip part. I have the second clip. And I have the third, cl third clip. So now I've got a clip in the middle. And it's just simply, again, selecting that piece that I no longer want. Right click, remove. No, no, I'm not saying remove. I'm saying remove the split, not remove the piece. Okay, you would have to undo it. If you did a lot of splits and you realize, okay, I did too many splits, you will have to undo before you made the splits. Now, you might not need to go back that far. It's okay if I've got you know, a split right here in the middle of my voice. You know, if I've got a, a split right here, it's okay. It's, it doesn't affect the actual rhythm of anything. There's a split right in the middle of my word, but as it plays... Social media. Remember... You it doesn't affect the, the, vo the vocal. So if you've got a split in the wrong place, you may not need to go back to undo it. Just ignore it. Just don't do anything with it. But the splits that you've made to make the edits definitely are the ones that you will use. So, so in other words, if you had another split that was inside the, the, mm -hmm. the main split piece that you, want, yeah, that you wanted to just Keep. ignore, mm -hmm. then you could still delete that section, you'd still have one kind of um, forlorn split yeah, like, there, but you could... Yeah, like uh, an accidental one, and you can ignore it. Any, yeah. any split, again, uh, it, it doesn't edit the original, it doesn't change the original video, so you can always go back to it, but a split that's in the wrong place, yeah, just ignore it, because it doesn't do anything unless you choose to remove it. So I'm trying to find where else can I start my voice here so probably right here right click split I've got a piece in between I'm talking a little bit of a pause remove this part I talk again and this is this is why in Hollywood movies they record the action for a few weeks or months but then they spend even more months after that editing it they have a lot of footage to get through. The director got three angles of that action scene. Well, they're going to take a piece from one angle, plus a piece from another one, plus a piece from the first one again, and edit it all into the sequence that makes sense. Directors do this all the time. Whatever scene you see is probably not what was originally shot. It's composited and it's put together. It's edited. So in my case... Where I give you a great web design tip in about a minute. This it is so it goes from one to the other now people then ask right away well I see that you kind of jumped in a weird way in about a minute the right, it jumped a little bit because it was one position to one position this is the part where you decide uh, how to fix it or if it needs fixing now some people say well can't we blend them together and all of that there is a way to do some sort of blendings but really 
you're never going to match things up perfectly. Even uh, in big Hollywood movies, there's always the issue about going from one thing to another thing. Um, that my head was slightly one inch to the side, and when I start to talk again, it's one inch to the side. So there will be that jump of my head moving one inch. And if I have expensive computer graphics, yeah, I can blend that together. This is not going to be able to let you do that. iMovie doesn't let you do that. So these are the sorts of things that is not a big deal, or if it really bothers you, you need to perfectly say everything you're going to say without mistakes. There was a part that I stopped between this thought and that thought, and it doesn't quite match up from here to here. I'm going to either live with it, or I'm going to re-record it with no mistakes. And that's, not, that's going to be challenging, too. Or you can add something in between, right? Yeah. Um, you can add, or you could add, can, can, well, probably jumping ahead, but if you wanted to have like uh, a, one frame or a few frames that had title frame that's, yeah. you know, social media tips, one minute tips. Yeah, really good point. In the middle between these two thoughts, yeah, I could put up a picture that has the name of the episode. So then it's okay, I'm talking, it shows the name, and then I go back to talking, and then there's no disconnect between this word and that word. I could do that, yes. Yes? On the same theme, let's say you have a screen or PowerPoint or something, you added a few slides there, mm -hmm. and then you wanted to add audio to that as well. Mm -hmm. Would this allow you to, this tool allow you to do that? Possibly. Let me just check something here. Uh, add videos and photos. Um, the formats that it allows are listed right here. There's a variety of videos. Let's see, there's WAVI, MPEG. If I see PowerPoint, if I see PPT or PPTX for PowerPoint, I might be able to add it. Now, I don't doubt that in the, the basic movie maker, maybe it doesn't have that feature. But in the more powerful video editors, it might have that feature. Um, from PowerPoint, I think you can save one frame at a time as a JPEG or a PNG or BMP. So out of your PowerPoint, you could extract those frames that you want. And Movie Maker can accept JPEGs, PNGs, BMPs, and such. So there are ways to get it out of one video format or presentation format into another. You might have to jump through a few hoops, but usually there are ways to kind of pass that around. So if you took a JPEG of a PowerPoint and threw it in there, could you then make it a bunch of frames? Yes. There is a way, uh, after you've added the video, there's going to be an option somewhere up here that asks for how long to show that frame. One second, ten seconds, as much as you want. So let's see a little bit more here. Tip in about a minute. This week, we're talking about Twitter and the importance of social media. OK, so uh, probably I'll just jump a little bit ahead over here. It looks like I'm talking about something, and then once again, I stop over here. So I'm, uh, I'm guiding myself a little bit by what I'm saying. And that's not always the case in that simply if the screen, simply if I'm not saying anything, it's I have to remove it. No, I might not be saying anything because I'm showing something. Maybe at that moment, I have up on screen uh, a screen from Twitter, and I'm just showing the screen. That's why I need to play it again. Is the perfect website. Oh, yeah, okay, this is the part where I'm trying to figure out the way to word this. So right here, I'm, I'm, I need to figure out which of the three different ways I said this I'm going to keep. I'm going to back up to when I start talking about this. Takes that name. And Twitter with 330. So probably right after here. And Twitter with, so I'm going to put a uh, cut right here, because then I repeat myself. With 330 million people is the perfect. And Twitter with over 330 million people is the per. And Twitter. Yeah, so the third one was the correct one. So I need to split uh, over here. Great web design tip in about a minute. That's too far back. Uh, over here. Takes that name. And Twitter. Yeah, so right here I started to say, and Twitter. OK, so I'm going to split it. Now there's a keyboard shortcut also of, of M. Um, the letter, simply the letter M. Uh, because these menus at the top you can do right-click, but also you get a menu at the top 
video tools edit split and on most of these menu items when you hover over they also give you a keyboard shortcut splitting a video is also M not control M or anything like that just pressing M on the keyboard so I'm I'm pressing M on the keyboard and it makes a split that's how I remember it M to make a split it made a split there's a lot of keyboard shortcuts like here to press play it's the same thing as pressing space bar when you hover over this one previous frame you can go one frame at a time by pressing J on the keyboard so on the keyboard one frame at a time to find the perfect place to make a split right here next frame L moving it exactly to the right place and then pressing M all of these keyboard shortcuts as you get more adept or interested in doing video editing you want to learn these shortcuts instead of moving your mouse all the way across the screen to click then moving to click over here or right clicking keyboard shortcuts help you a lot so I'm trying to find the other part here so make sure you and Twitter okay so it seems to be over here somewhere make the split there so now I've got a I've got the first part of the clip over here that's good then I've got a, a clip over here that's not good then I start again what I want so in between select it remove it and it's gonna go it's gonna flow from here to here I delete that I play it so that no one else takes that name and Twitter is the and again my head is at a certain tilt at this point and then it's at another tilt this point I may or may not care about that you you I, as beginners I think people really care about that well my head's in the wrong place don't worry about it this look look objectively at videos that you see if you watch you know a a video presentation a professional one it's never that like uh, it flows exactly from one split to the other. There is a little shift. That's fine. The person shifts. We, we subconsciously are always moving around. Uh, our head moves a little bit, or we sh slightly shift weight, and we, we move. So this is not a this is not a problem. This is not a mistake. No one is going to say, "Oh, his head moved." No, they're going to be listening. They're going to be watching. If it's interesting, they will be paying attention. And something simply like that, even if I put it on mute, as soon as you can, something so like that no that, one else where there's a takes little shift in the view. And Twitter occurs. is the perfect it social it network with over 330 million second. people. We're moving on. So make sure you get your name. To attention to. And so that no one else takes that name. And Twitter is. If it really bothers you, there are animations that can be added between the frames. You see what I can do from one clip to another. I can add. Well, let me mute this. I can add this effect where you get. And Twitter name is the. And Twitter and Twitter and Twitter and Twitter names and Twitter names. But these are supposed to be. And Twitter name is the. That these. And Twitter names is from one to the other. And Twitter name like when you. Since the scene, since the scene looks almost exactly the same, you don't see a difference. But like, think about movies where they're in the desert, and then the next scene they're in the in the uh, in the swamp. So there is a sort of like visual transition from this scene to that scene. That's what these are supposed to represent. But all of these scenes look exactly the same, so you don't really see it. Yeah. And Twitter name is the. And Twitter name is the. And the record, the record scratch. Yeah. Somebody's narrating or whatnot. Mm -hmm. What do they call that? That particular uh, sound, I believe it's called the record scratch, because um, that's that's what it came from, the, the sound of scratching the needle acro across the uh, vinyl record. Uh, I don't think we have that effect here, but uh, that's how uh, that's what that would be, a record scratch transition. So in order to add that spacer, do you actually drag it in there? Or? You select this clip is going to flow into this clip you select the second clip and then you click the one you want and, and then what happens is you see now this this is transitioning into this for a moment this transitions into this see how there's this clip this clip so they 
transition into each other. They animate into each other. So you just click. So you click the, 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 later, the later one. The second one, yes. You click the second one, and then you select your animation. I'm going to do this one. And so Twitter is the... Blur through, <coughs> blur through black. I'm going to select that one, just to see what it looks like. I'm going to back up, and then I'm going to play it again. Forms as soon as you can, so that no one else and takes Twitter that name. Is the per okay, so <coughs> it did it, but it wasn't very good. It's cutting. I'm cutting myself off. I'm I'm still speaking in one clip, and I'm then start to speak in another clip, and in between there's this animation. Well, visually, when I had it on on mute, visually it can, seems so that to no one else be okay. And Twitter me, is the, the perfect but social audio network. audio-wise, it's terrible. I'm talking over my own my own self. Forms as soon as you can, so that no one else and takes Twitter me is the okay. The way I would fix that is I'm I made the split too close. I cut my first bit of speech right there. And then I added my second bit right there. I should have given a buffer of about one second after finished speaking, and then a buffer of approximately one second before I start speaking. So I've got a second after I speak, a second before I speak. That's enough of a buffer for this animation to happen between them so that I'm not talking over myself. And so you see it's much more work and complex than simply, OK, choosing this animation from here to here. And to Twitter here. Me is the... And I have to think of the audio, really, too. If, sorry, I'm sorry. Yeah. If you really wanted that to happen, then you pretty much have to start all over again. Well, only start over in terms of undoing a couple of times to take it back before I split. Right. But if, you know, like, say you worked on the thing for another half hour and we're further down, to go back to that one, it's, you can't just yeah. select... Yeah, you pretty... It's not like you can go back to your trash bin and pull out that section. Movie Maker has that limitation, and I haven't checked with iMovie recently, but I use Adobe Premiere Elements mostly, and on that one it does let you go back 10 steps to fix something that you did 10 steps ago. This free one gives you a lot of great tools, but not everything. So the paid ones, those are the ones that are the best ones. And I've had several times where you know, half an hour later, I come back and I rewatch things and I say, okay, that should have been better. And I can go in and there's a little tool there and I, and I bring it back magically. I bring back the part that I removed because it's still all in memory. Yeah, because you don't want to, even if you could undo 100 steps, you don't want to undo no. 100 steps. No, that you're going to undo everything that did work. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. How, how would you do that? Because that's kind of like the history tool in a lot of the other Adobe products. <coughs> well, in Premiere Elements, which is the little brother of Premiere Pro, which is the one that I need to educate myself more on, but I know, I know Premiere Elements, it is simply that you go back to the beginning of the clip and your mouse cursor will change to a different icon, uh, where then you can click and drag to bring back what you had clipped out. Yeah, in a, in a sense, it's kind of squishing together, out of sight, out of mind, and you can just uncompress it, and it's still there. Yes? So, um, whatever animation you do, uh, think, uh, what's it in every split that you have? Can you use different animations in each split? You can. So, in this split here, I'm going to choose the uh, blur through <laughs> black. But then at the beginning up here, when I had another split, I can go to that split and then add the other one, which is blur through in white. A, so now I've got one animation here. Series where I here. give you a great web design tip in a This minute. week we're talking about that, and then down here I've got a different animation. So, so at every no one split, you can take Twitter a different animation. You, have to go to the beginning of the you go to the beginning where where the split is at. Yes. Uh, this one is going to animate into this one, so I select it, and that's where I add it. This one is going to animate into this one, so I select here, and that's where I add it, and that's where it animates. Yes? Uh, student ID getting a student version of Adobe Elements. Uh, with Adobe Elements, I'm not sure if there's a student ID version, but I know with um, Adobe uh, Premiere Pro, the full one, there is. Uh, so we, we'd have to look into that. You can also get the entire Adobe suite mm -hmm. as a student for 19 Student ID. 
student ID. Yeah, I believe being being enrolled in classes here should be enough to get you that ID. Uh, I mean that uh, uh, discount, but it's for the full Adobe suite. And I called Adobe directly and told them San Diego Community College Continuing Education, and they knew exactly what they were doing. Great. Okay. Look at the licensing contract for Adobe, mm -hmm. and specifically they call out New Horizons as to not allow them to do that. Mm. It's in the contract if you read the contract. Oh, really? Well, uh, I'm glad someone does, because no one else does. So, so the, the question I was trying to get though is let's say you use this tool in class and you make something that's really cool, and then you want to sell it. Okay, now for licensing, what do we do? Yeah, that's a good point. I need to refresh myself on, on what that is because it's true. Technically, I believe if you get the student version of all of this, you need it for student work. So that then when you use your student version to do professional work, I believe then it is then the violation of the terms of service. Now, there's no way for them to know that and they're not tracking you to check that. You just have to deal with a little thing called morality. But um, I think you know there. No one is no one is paying attention to that. Well, I'm not trying to do anything unethical. What I'm saying no, no, of course. If I use AutoCAD the student edition. Yeah. It exports it and says student edition. Oh, so you okay. can't take those plans to the city. Yeah. Okay, but if you make the content as a student, okay, you just have to buy the professional version at full retail and then import it. And you can use it. Well, you said AutoCAD, right? Uh, yeah, that, that's a different program. I know, but. Yes, so what I'm, what I'm getting at is I don't believe there's any sort of watermark like that in the student version of the Adobe products. But yeah, when you do then upgrade to the full professional version, then you would use it for professional purposes. But yeah, you could do the export and the import. That, that should work. I, I haven't done it, so I don't know what the whole process would be. So it may be simply as opening it, or you may need to export it. I'm not quite sure. I have the I have the full version at the moment. Uh, metadata typically that's encoded in whatever you work on. Like yeah. if I save the Word document, I'll say this is produced by my name and then by student edition. That's that's true. There, there could be something going on there behind the scenes. To my knowledge, I haven't really heard in the real world people telling me that they've gotten into trouble, but that's always in the back of my mind and I tell students that that there are educational versions but in theory they're supposed to be used for educational purposes and then once you uh, want to do for professional purposes you should get the professional person you should get the professional version which is then, then comes with professional prices so it's a can of worms I've not seen anyone that for those Mm. Oh, okay. So if I'm if I'm if I've got a photo open in Photoshop or Lightroom, you can just click and it'll show the metadata. You go up to the file menu and it says file properties and the metadata is in there. File menu and then properties. Sometimes you can just right click on the menus too. Oh yeah. I think you can also do like Control J or something. Yes. One last question. Uh, what's a good source or a good place where you can obtain students? There's a couple of websites. Um, uscollegeby.com. Uscollegeby.com. Oops, they recently changed their license model in a variety of products. With these changes, we've moved all resources. Oh, okay. Now their address is Sealand, Computerland, Sealand.com slash education. I hadn't been to it very recently. I used to direct students to uscollegeby.com, and now they're saying actually go to Sealand.com slash education. And there's another one that I, I don't I don't remember at the moment. I have to look it up. But you can also go directly to the companies themselves. You go over to the Microsoft site and go in there and find the educational version 
uh, or section that is, you go to adobe.com and you find the educational version. So you sort of don't need like these clearing houses anymore about the, the like a middleman to get into the educational version. Uh, a lot of the companies themselves, you just go to their site and there is an educational version to get. <clears throat> So I've got a couple more things to edit here, then I'll show you more things, such as adding text and adding music. And Twitter is the perfect social network with over 330 million people. So make sure you get your name on twitter.com as soon as you can. This has been Victor. So right here, I forgot the name of the series, so I probably said it correctly over here. This is Victor for the weekly social media okay so over here I'm saying something I'm gonna find a spot to pause right here make the split and I'm gonna jump down here and right here probably make that split so in between I've got this part where it's a mistake I delete that and I play it again com as soon as you can this is Victor for the weekly social media moment. And again, too much of a pause there, so I, have, I would have to figure out where do I need to make the split. If I split it simply right here, perhaps the mouth doesn't match up with over here. So this is where I can move at the frame by frame, L and J, to move frame by frame to find exactly, maybe right there, M to make the mark, then move it over here somewhere here make that mark and now there's a piece in between I don't want when I play it for the weekly social media moment so I could go in and fine-tune it and find exactly where to do it but that's the idea this is uh, very common that you spend at least the same and often double the amount of time the length of your video if I recorded a 10 minute long video you're gonna probably spend at least 10 minutes more editing it because you're gonna need to watch the whole 10 minutes again and most likely one and a half to two times longer because of this figuring out where to split it where to add the text where to fade the music in and all of that so again that's why you know the Star Wars movies they record them in you know one year and then they take two years to to edit them now faster than ever but classically it was three years in between you know, the original Star Wars and then Empire Strikes Back and then another three years between Return of the Jedi because so long to record special effects, music, editing. So be prepared that even if you're doing a one minute long video, we've already spent, what, 40 minutes on it. Obviously, I'm explaining what to do, but when you actually do it, it takes a while. Plus, they learned after the first one that you got to get your merchandising ready for <laughs> Yeah, or else when you open up your presents, they're empty. <laughs> You can. So I opened up one clip earlier, but up on the home tab I have here, add a photo or a video. So I can add a completely other photo or video to this one and then start to add a new angle or a different video or anything. Like a screenshot of the text. Yeah, exactly. So if I did have it, like I'm going to put in here, add a photo. I'm going to go over here just to grab that koala picture again. And uh, I got a picture of koala, add it in, and there we go. So after my video ends, there's a koala for some reason. But I could uh, easily then move it. Okay, I'm going to move the koala, click it and drag it, and I'm going to move it right here. So after I speak here for a moment, then there's a subliminal message. Com, as soon as you can. Koala. <laughs> now obviously it lasts too long, but I can, I can change it at the top, and then it comes back to me. This is Victor. So yeah, I can add any video or... Uh, audio, we'll do audio in a moment, any video or any photo and move it around and arrange it however you want and all of these menu items again you, you can kind of explore them on your own this video, uh, this graphic is too long I can go in and shorten it just to one second there. Question? I lost my thought. Okay, yes. Can you continue the audio going through the That's a little advanced but yes because what would have to happen is right now the audio and the video are linked as one. Um, when you do things much more professionally, you're usually recording video with some hardware, and then you're recording audio with another. 
So I'm not doing it that advanced at the moment, but I would have a little microphone clipped to my shirt, and that is recording only the audio, and I have my camera recording my voice and my face. So I have two separate pieces to work with. That's how I would then have a separate audio track. It would be right down here, where my, where my visuals are in one track and the audio is in another, and I could have my voice continue to play beneath the, the video. But at the moment, it's kind of advanced to, to try to do. Yes? Uh, just on that, I just had a thought on that same idea. Is there any way to layer? With uh, with Movie Maker, not so much, and I and I haven't checked iMovie recently. But when you do go to Premiere Elements or Premiere Pro or those higher end ones, definitely you can layer different videos on top of each other, like picture in picture, or you can put a photo on top of. You can have a photo moving on top of video. Yes, right now with this basic editor, there's. I don't think you can do that as much. I was just curious if you could, you know. Couldn't separate the audio from your original video. You could at least lay the picture, you know, in 100% opacity over top of that section, so you'd still hear the audio. No running. Yeah, um, that that would make sense, but I'm I don't think there's the capability in this basic editor. Yeah. Yes. In Elements, it would. If you're using Adobe Elements, this video, this video as is, as I ingested it, as I put it in, it, uh, Elements would show the video and the audio as separate elements. Yeah. Com as soon as you can. So there you go. Now it's subliminal. You can go in and shorten it even more. I want this to show for 0 0.1 seconds. Com as soon as you can. This is Victor for the weekly social media moment. They used to do that with Coca Cola at the movies. They used to? Okay, so then the video ends right here. Social media moment. Okay, so in total, if I zoom out that far, uh, in, in total, the video, remember, started at 1 minute 24 seconds, and now with my edits, it's gone down to 40 seconds, 41 seconds or so. Uh, this fraction here goes from 0 to 100, so almost 41 seconds. I'm just pointing that out in terms of you often start with more footage than you need, and you usually cut it down to what you do need. Again, big Hollywood movies, even independent movies, everything. They record a lot of footage so that you have the coverage for it so that you, then you can edit it to what you actually need. I was actually just being interviewed on Tuesday. The college is putting together a series of videos promoting these classes. They asked me to talk about some of these classes. So um, because I have some experience in video editing, I worked with the videographer and, uh, and I talked about my classes and I did this where I composed myself, I got my thoughts, I spoke, so he needs to go in and cut out the parts that are unnecessary and maybe rearrange what I said to make have more impact, because he said he's been doing this for a while and he used to be able to make five minute long videos about our classes and now he, sh he says that people don't pay attention that long. People want it in two minutes or less. So now he has to take this footage that he records and put it in in really bite-sized chunks and uh, it's not always that Two minutes is the maximum of any video. No, it depends on many factors. Your content, your audience, if they had their coffee, whatever. So many factors. So when people ask, how long should my video be? There's no answer. It depends on your content, how interesting it is, your audience, and a bunch of other factors that we'll talk about later. So this being 40 seconds long, 41 seconds, may be the optimal length or not. Maybe I don't say enough. Maybe it does need to be 60 seconds. Maybe I cut it so much that now it's too short and not giving the impact that I'm looking for. Yeah? I don't want to go ahead, but adding, when you start talking about Twitter, if you were to throw up in text your Twitter handle, or whatever it's called. That's coming up right now, actually. We're going to talk about adding text. I want to display something on screen like text. Um, so we can embed text directly on the videos. Uh, and when we get it over to YouTube, we actually have extra features on YouTube. 
I'm going to embed my Twitter handle on the screen, but it is not clickable. A person will not be able to click on that to go to my Twitter. That will happen once I upload it to YouTube, and I use the YouTube feature to make this parts of the screen clickable. So within the movie itself, it just has text, but it's not active. Yes? Once you switch it to YouTube, you still have to do another step to make it to be able to click on the Twitter account. Yes. Yeah, and we'll get to that on, on part two. So let's say I want to first put my name on screen after I say it, and I also want to put my Twitter address on screen. So I have to find the part of the video where I'm saying my name. Hello, and welcome to the weekly Web Design Minute. I'm Victor Campos. So in my case, it seems to be within this area right here which is at approximately 4.6 seconds. And I want to start to display my name right there. So I move the playhead to where I want the text to appear. And this is, again, with practice. Do I want it to appear exactly when I start speaking? Do I want it to appear slightly after I start speaking, slightly before? I can't give you that answer. That's going to be the aesthetic that you choose. Um, so let's just say somewhere right here. I have then uh, on the on the home tab, I have some. I have a little group here. Add. Now I know where it's going to ask. How did you yes. pull that up? This zooming in like this. Mm -hmm. This is related to Windows, not Movie Maker. You know how I'm always zooming in and out of the lecture. This is something built into Windows, which is by holding down the Windows key and then plus and minus on the keyboard that lets you zoom into any area of the screen. It's Windows plus, Windows minus. So here we've got this little group of add. Add another video, add music, add a webcam video. If you've got a camera on your computer, you turn that on, you record. Add narration, add a snapshot. Here we go, title, caption, credits. And if you hover over these, they usually tell you a little something. Add a new title before the selected item. So title is usually text that's going to appear before anything. At the very beginning of your video, show a little bit of text. On the opposite is credits. Add new blank credits at the end of the video. Just like at the movies, the movie ends and the credits scroll, that's what that is. At the end of your video, you can put a little bit of credits. And then caption is, Basically, wherever you have that playhead, that's where you're adding the text. So I want my name to appear at four seconds. So I would use a caption that creates a new track. Text is going to appear from here to here, which is approximately, here duration, 6.4 seconds. And the text that I want is here. I get fonts, colors, a bit of special effects. You see now the toolbar has changed. Home tools, animation, visual, project view, video, text. So depending on what thing is selected, if I select video, I might get video tools. If I select text, I get text tools. Depending what's selected, the menu at the top changes. Text is too small, so I can double click it to edit again, make the text bigger. Move the text around, maybe put it in the corner. Too big, but then I'm um, trying to figure out a good size. And now what happens is this. Lee Web Design. Lee Web Design Minute. I'm Victor Campos. This is the series where I give you a great web design tip in about a minute. The default in my case was that my name appeared for all of that time, which in this case is 6.4 seconds. If I only want it to appear, you know, three seconds, there it is. The text. The text toolbar format 
duration. I've changed the length of time that that text appears. Welcome to the weekly Web Design Minute. I'm Victor Campos. This is the series where I give you a great... So there's no wrong answer to how long the text is, but usually you want to think in terms of, can the person read it? Um, you will be surprised to know that uh, they won't be able to read it. Because what happens is, we're making our video, it's in our mind, I wrote the name, I know my name, I, I, I know that I've read it. But when a person watches your video for the very first time, things are suddenly happening. Suddenly text appeared, suddenly it's gone. Think in terms of if you can read it out loud comfortably. So without the sound, I'm going to play this again. Web Design Minute. I'm Victor Campos. Victor Campos. This is the series where I give you a time. great web design so, okay, tip that in was about a enough. minute. If I had this only set to, you know, two seconds, I'm going to try that again. Web Design I have to Minute. Pause that. I'm Victor Campos. Victor Campos. This is the series where that I might give you a great web time. design tip. In a so reading it out loud once or twice is very helpful to determine if it is long enough for the person to actually read it and comprehend it. And that text tool shows up when you're in the text. When you've selected the text yeah. track. Yeah. When I select a video track, it goes away because there's no text to edit there. When I select a text track, then I get the text tools. Over here. For the text? Yeah. There should be, yes, when you select the text. I'm Victor Campo. 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 So you have all of these. I'm Victor Campo. Just the plain text under the text formats. You have these effects. So I could do I'm this one right here and get really fancy. The Web Design Minute. I'm Victor Campos. This is the series where I give you a great. So these tools are context sensitive. I'm Victor. They change. Um, I'm based Victor on Campo. Context. They they change I'm, based on I'm what Victor you've uh, selected. I'm Victor Campo. The Web Design Minute. I'm Victor Campos. This is the series where I give you a great... Now, because of that transition, I would lengthen the length of time to, sh to show the text because so much happened. Like, what am I looking at? So, uh, again, this is... The Web Design Minute. Where I'm all Victor that's Campos. happening. This is the series then where I give you a great enough, web design tip in about a away. minute. So this week, we're things. talking about Twitter and the... I wanted to also show my Twitter name uh, later over here somewhere. And Twitter is the perfect social network with over 330 million people. So make sure you get your name on Twitter. So maybe somewhere here, I start to talk about getting your name on Twitter. So again, I would go to the spot, I would select caption, and then I would type my address, twitter.com slash uh, web tips, whatever my address is. Change size, change colors. Uh, the problem with using text is um, the default in my case is white. Uh, the problem is that depending what is behind the text, may um, make it easier or hard to view my text. Uh, so if I have white text on a dark background, well, it's very easy to read, yes. But if I had uh, black text on a black background, I can't see that at all, or the gray text. So the context of what's behind the text is also very important. You had a background before? You said Mr. Campos? That one was because I added. To make, sure make sure you make sure, get your. make sure you make sure There was a background right here, and they're, make sure you they're get fixing your name. that issue. They're putting that background behind my text, which should make it readable. So instead of me trying to figure out what the perfect color is using one of to these make sure you get your name animations, they often pick a good color combination.
with over 330 million people. So make sure you get your name on Twitter.com as soon as you can. This is Victor for the weekly social media moment. You should, when you come back, you should have a piece of uh, bamboo in your mouth. Mm -hmm. I can't add bamboo in, in a Movie Maker, but I can probably do it in Elements. Before everything, I could add a title. So to kind of uh, catch people's attention before, I have a title here. Click on that. And then I also have these other special effects. Um, th the name that appears here is based on the name of my file. I called my project Social Media Tip Twitter. So it automatically calls it Social Media Tip Twitter. <clears throat> if my file name was something else just like my project, it would have said my project. But obviously I could go in here and, and make any changes. Yep. Does that add to your actual video? That yes. Did it, the time? it did. It's up to 47 seconds now, oh, or okay. it was 40 a moment ago, because there has to be some amount of time to display the text and the animation, and then I start speaking. Okay. So in this case, seven more seconds. Okay. Let's see, I go with this one over here, and then now I'll play that. Social media tip Twitter, so that appears for some amount of time, maybe too long. I have a duration I can change up there. And Hello, and welcome to the weekly web design. Well, because it started from being this sort of screen here, and then suddenly I appear here. This is in a, a case where I might want to add an animation. Hello and welcome to the week. See that? So it's got one of these other types of animations. Hello and welcome to the. Hello and welcome to the weekly. Well, that animation is a transition, but in terms of transitioning, yes, from one view to another, yeah, uh, that's that's what traditionally animations have been, um, or transitions to go from one short of one short of one sort of shot or view to another with some sort of smooth thing in between. Do you have a class just on this? No, I, I wish I, I did, and if there's enough demand, I would gladly teach that. But uh, I don't teach that, but I, I believe other instructors do in this whole IMCP program and such, and other video editing classes. The second section of IMCP is. Hmm? Question. Is there a way of. Yes, when you've got when you select where the transition is happening uh, on on that animation, there is right there duration, and you can uh, set one of these presets or type your own. So if you needed a five second long one, sure you can do that. So it's going to be five whole seconds between here and there, way too much. But if you need it long, hello and shorter, welcome to the weekly web. Really so there is the way there. The default of one and a half or whatever that was is usually good. We can go even shorter, you know, a quarter of a second. So then it goes like this. Hello and welcome to the weekly. Okay, let's take one more break and then after the break we'll we'll uh, add a little bit of music to the project. It's uh, eleven fifty-two. Let's take a short break just until eleven, just until twelve. So slightly less than ten minutes. Because remember, we have to uh, end. Uh, we have to cover the uh, the sound part.